good afternoon so <clears throat> continuing on our anona videos uh we're we're now approaching the anonas that are slightly more uh frost tender so these will require some babying in the winter time uh, so starting off with uh, this uh, sugar apple here this particular variety is actually a giant sugar apple uh, unlike a traditional sugar apple the joint sugar apple they've been bred to produce fruits that are about the size of a, um, a grapefruit basically I mean they're gigantic um, uh, fruit plants uh, fruits anyway uh, sugar apples will basically become deciduous in the Central Valley so um, they are again they are a bit cold sensitive uh, this particular guy has been in the ground for a little this is gonna be going two years now so again just treat these like they would be a deciduous tree so moving on got a couple more sugar apples <clears throat> So the one back there was a giant sugar apple. That's, uh, of course, that's the, the green variety. This particular variety right here, uh, this is the quote, quote, normal size sugar apple. A, uh, just a, a, a thing with sugar apples is, this is the most common variety of anonas. I mean, we don't hear about sugar apples in the Central Valley. You know, I mean, the Chiamoyas and the Edamoyas take the crown of papillary the reason why we don't hear about these is these there's not a whole lot of growers that are in this region and, and also the, sh the fruits themselves don't ship well so sugar apple from seed these bear fruit relatively quick we're talking two years three years at the most so most of the time these sugar apples are grown from seed so moving on, this particular variety is another sugar apple, except it is red. This is the, uh, the red sugar apple, also known as a Kampong Mav. This, for the most part, the red sugar apples, this particular variety anyway, is grafted, as evidenced by the union joint here. So, and being that it is grafted, I mean, it, it you know, first thing it's going to do is it tries to uh, fruit. So, the thing with red sugar apples is even if you plant a, a red sugar apple seed, for the most part, you're probably going to end up getting a green sugar apple. So, that's why for the most part, these guys are grafted. Got uh, another Anona that I wanted to discuss. Actually, let's go this way right here so we're, we're going back to the hardcore ones sugar apples again they they do okay in the Central Valley coal you'll want to babysit them just a bit but <clears throat> this one right here you are gonna have to uh, shelter them basically when the temperature hits below 40 this is the king of all the anonas this is the Soursop. As you can see, I've got it in a container. Um, and last year, I did top this particular tree off right about here, and that's all brand new growth. So this one is going about two years, two and a half years now. So very likely, it's going to start fruiting next year. So that's a slightly more mature uh, tree. Got a couple more back here. So that's the main sugar apple. I'm sorry, sour sap. Got a few more. These are slightly younger. These two sour saps are likely about two years of age. Very, very fast grower. For the most part, sour saps are grown from seed as well uh, just like sugar apples you're talking in order to bear fruit once grown from seed you're talking three years three to five years um, so likely these will also produce fruits next year um, a note about sour saps though again insanely frost sensitive 40 degrees you gotta shelter them 
what's going to happen is when the frost hits, it's going to defoliate basically completely. And being that it is a true evergreen tree, it doesn't know to stop. It's going to try to push out new growth over and over and over again. And guess what? The cold hits the leaves, it falls. And after three, four, five cycles, the tree basically dies of exhaustion. There's just no more energy in the tree left to produce uh, leaves. So that's why you've got to shelter these um, sour sops. Uh, of course, sour sops, you know, I mean, they, they produce fruits that are like five to seven pounds a piece. Uh, insanely delicious and very, very nutritious. Last one. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Actually, let me see if I can get back here. This particular tree right here, not been able to find a whole lot of reliable information about this particular tree. It's, uh, there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet. But this is the Alama. Cool thing about this tree is, in the Central Valley, it basically becomes deciduous. Um, just like the uh, sour sap, it will want a lot of frost protection. So I basically treat this particular uh, tree as if it were a sour sap, even though it loses all of its leaves in the winter time. From what I've been told, the fruits have a tendency to crack, which is fine. That, that's actually how you know it is ripened. And from everything I've read, the Alama is the most delicious of all the known species. I mean, that's that's a pretty hard uh, thing to beat. I mean, if you know, if it beats a cherimoya, soursop, and the edamoya, and also sugar apple, I mean. So this particular fruit, uh, this particular tree did uh, flower this year, um, but the thing is that um, just like a lot of the other nonas, the flowers, the female and the male stages. This particular tree, they were not in sync. I mean, I was getting either a male or a female the next day. So I was not able to collect the pollens from the male and then pollinate the female. So, but anyway, I'm not too concerned. I mean, it's, I did want this guy to be focusing on mostly root and also foliage growth. So very likely next year it will start producing fruit for us. So anyhow, yeah, that is it. Have a good afternoon.